Are you ready to learn the secret to life, the universe, and everything? It's recursion. Recursion is one of the most profoundly impactful concepts that we'll learn in this course. And in this lesson, we're going to take a look at what is recursion and how does it manifest in computer science, specifically in our processes and our structures. But first, let's start with a quick demonstration of what recursion is. And the best way to do this is with a little bit of uh, Hollywood magic, right? So just one second and uh, here you go. You ready to go on your first uh, recursive ride here? Boom. Wow. Look at that. So what's happening here? Why is this recursive and what's going on? Well, part of my screen is captured by this software and being recorded. Uh, and then another part of my screen is giving me a preview of what is being shown as, as being recorded. Well, when we make those two things the same and what is recorded is the preview and there's a little bit of an offset and a little bit of a, a, a scaling factor applied, you'll notice that this really cool effect happens where it, this camera feeds back into itself and you get all these really interesting, fascinating effects. And then all the way, way down there somewhere, this has to stop, right? This, this can't go on infinitely. But when you place two mirrors in front of each other and the light bounces back and forth off of them and you get that really cool effect, that's a recursive process at play. And you can do the interesting things with this, right? Well, I, I can change the view a little bit and, and make myself large or small and get different effects. This is a visual example of recursion. But let's talk about what recursion is more generally and try and focus on uh, how we can think about the concept of recursion in a broad terms before looking at specifically how we implement it in a programming language like Python. So the first question I want to address is why should you care about recursion? What is important about this concept? And this is a concept that gets a very bad rap in introductory computer science. And I think I know why, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. What is recursion? And we're going to look at two different forms and think about recursion in, in, in two different ways that it, 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 you'll experience it in computer science. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video before we look at the specifics of, uh, of how we implement recursive structures and processes is to give a sense of what do we need to be careful of in, uh, when we start thinking in terms of recursion and how do we start thinking about solving something recursively. So let's go to the beginning. Why should you care? And I started this video by saying this is the secret to life, the universe, and everything. And I'm really not lying. I truly believe that if you were, that there's an argument to be made that life is a fundamentally recursive process and what makes it so beautiful, compelling. And if you were to look at the, the history and the evolution of life over time, there are profound recursive processes and dynamics at play. The process of life begetting life and creating other life forms that can create more life uh, is a recursive process. Uh, and so is uh, the structure of, of our sort of life code, which is DNA, right? That's a recursive structure. And we can build strands of DNA that are the same uh, pieces of data, the same base pairs, um, but structured and rearranged in increasing and varying lengths. And it builds on one another and it combines and, 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 and interacts with one another in interesting ways. And so um, life fundamentally is recursive in nature. Uh, what else is, is, is interesting and recursive? I'm going to argue that creative processes, anything that involves creative creativity is inherently recursive. And the idea here in its simplest uh, form is if we think about, say, uh, composing some music and you can have one note and you can follow it with another note and you've got a piece of music and then you can follow it with more notes and you can combine these notes together and you can continue to build upon some, some structure that is uh, being created and, and becomes recursive in nature. Uh, similarly, our languages and the way that we form thoughts and communicate our thoughts are inherently recursive. The grammars that we have available tend to define structures in a recursive nature, right? What is, uh, how do we think about writing? Well, we, we have one sentence and we can follow that with another sentence and we can, and we have a piece of writing. And if we follow that with another sentence, we still have a piece of writing. And so we can continue to um, build up in a creative way and combine things in a creative way, uh, these structures of text that 
uh, when, when we add two paragraphs together, it doesn't change the nature of what we've got. We can keep adding on to that, um, but we're allowed to continue to build up and use these recursive grammar rules uh, to express things that wouldn't be possible to express if we if we could ha had a limit at some point where we said, okay, this is the end and you can't continue to build upon this, right? So why do we care about recursion? Well, as computer scientists, if you wanna build software that gives your end users the ability to do things that you couldn't even imagine as the creator of the software, Recursion is the secret to making that happen. This is what is at play in software such as PowerPoint, such as uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, such as uh, Photoshop or Illustrator. If you wanted to make a 3D movie or game, there's recursion at play in all of these concepts. And the secret to making a piece of software that allows people to express creative concepts and build up creative structures and, and expressions in ways that you can't even imagine is recursion. So let's go back to talking about, well, now that we have a sense of why we should care about it, because it's the secret to creativity and life and what's cooler than that, what is recursion? Uh, now that we've, we've got some motivation and, and we're excited about this. Well, in computer science, the way that we think about recursion uh, is, is when something can refer to itself and be defined in terms of itself, more importantly. And this is, um, before we get to exactly what I mean by that, let me give you a, 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 another example that's a little bit more uh, personal and a little bit more human and, and, and English driven. A statement like I am me is sort of recursive in nature. Uh, the concept of I, that I can refer to myself and I can make statements in terms of myself and think at that level, is sort of a, a recursive thought, right? So when we think about recursion in computer science, there's two fundamental kinds of recursion that we tend to think about. And the first kind that I want to mention is algorithmic uh, recursion. So algorithmic recursion is uh, the idea is defining a process in terms of itself. Right? And uh, we'll look at an example of this in just a moment. But when you have a function that's recursive in nature, uh, it's going to be a function that is defined uh, in terms of, of calling itself and in, in referring to itself from within the body of that function and, and actually calling it. So a recursive uh, algorithm is a process defined in terms of itself. Right? And in introductory math classes, you've seen recursive algorithms, like how do you find the sum of all numbers between uh, one and five or less than five? Well, you take five and then you add that to the sum of all numbers that were between one and four. And you can keep thinking of that process recursively. Uh, if you wanna count the number of people in a long line, you can have someone at the front of the line say, hey, how many people are behind you? How many people are behind you? How many are people are behind you? And when you finally get to the end of that line, if people are actually following your algorithm uh, and, and someone says, there's no one behind me and they report to the person in front of them, uh, uh, no one's behind me. So one uh, or, or zero, and then we add one to that and keep passing that forward and adding one as we go uh, through counting the line back up. And you've got a recursive process for, for counting people in a line, right? Most of introduct introductory computer science courses focus on the algorithmic side, but I really think uh, where it's at with recursion and where uh, you get the beautiful, powerful applications of recursion is in, the st is in structural recursion, right? So structural recursion is the idea that we can uh, start to create data structures that are built up in terms of simpler pieces of this data structure. And uh, the easiest way to sort of think of this in the real world is like with Legos or stackable chairs or uh, uh, pieces that can be, one, once you've like added two pieces together, you can still keep adding more pieces to this. And uh, you can keep building out uh, modular configurations of something. There's no uh, end to the different ways you can combine things. And so structural recursion is about uh, defining things in terms of simple units and making sure that those units can be combined with one another such that the combination of them 
doesn't prevent you from continuing to combine it with other combinations of them. And so we often think of these as uh, well, like lists of nodes where we have you know one node after another node after another node, or even more powerfully, trees, right? So we can start to have uh, hierarchies. And when you think about like how your file system works, where you've got directories and files, that's a, a recursively uh, in, in a recursive structure uh, that's defined recursively, where uh, a, a directory can hold directories, which can hold directories, which can hold directories, and we reach the bottom of this uh, structural recursion once we have only files in a directory. Right, and so a structural uh, recursion, and when we think about recursion in a structural sense, its uh, structure is defined and combined in terms of themselves. And so this is a very powerful concept. This is the secret behind how uh, 3D scenes come to be. If uh, when Pixar or a movie uh, 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 shop is trying to build a scene, there are pieces of the scene which are grouped together. And you think of like a, an individual character made up, maybe made up of many groups and its head, that character's head might be made up of many more groups and its eye might be made up of many more groups of shapes. And ultimately at the end, you've got some simple shapes that are at the very bottom of the structurally uh, recursive uh, uh, scene. But that's what made it all possible. The ability to, to build up and, 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 and define sort of a hierarchy in such a way that we could uh, express really boundless creative thoughts in a program, right? And, and write data structures that supported this. When you think about a social network like Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and you think about the graph of how people are connected to one another and the rules for, well, who can see what and, and what shows up on my feed and things like that, there's a structure that it emerges from that, that represents, you know, how we relate with our friends and our family. Uh, and that's possible because of a, a recursive relationship in a structural, a recursively structural relationship. So these are the two key, um, uh, like kinds of recursion that we're going to see in this course and that we tend to think of generally uh, in computer science. We have algorithmic processes, which tend to be focused on processing or, or, or uh, evaluating or carrying out operations on uh, structurally recursive uh, uh, data. So what can go wrong with recursion now that we know a little bit about what it is? Well, the key thing that can go wrong is kind of like the key thing that can go wrong with a loop if you forget to increment it or move closer to some condition which uh, causes that loop to end. What happens when there's infinite recursion? Well. For there to be infinite recursion, we must know when our recursion must end. Before we uh, demonstrate how we might do that in a recursive, in a recursive uh, process, let's uh, take a look at uh, a simple little recursive function, right? And uh, this is gonna be a, a nonsensical little function we write, and let's just define it. So I would encourage you to go ahead and set up a file, like maybe name this ls42 recursion in your lessons directory and we might name this Icarus, right? And uh, flaps is going to be a parameter to this function, and this will be just a, uh, a uh, procedure which does nothing, right? And uh, we all know the story of Icarus. Uh, it's the boy who uh, realizes he can make wings and, and tries to flap as high towards the sun as possible, wants to get to the sun, right? And all sorts of things happen uh, and go wrong when you when you try and fly too high. Well, so what are we going to do here? Well, if we want to make this a recursive function, we can call Icarus, the Icarus function from within itself and say, okay, flap plus one or flaps plus one, right? Maybe before we do that, uh, let's say we print an F string that says uh, flaps and uh, then uses a placeholder for the, to evaluate the expression flaps. So we'll print that parameter each time this function gets called. And I'm not even gonna use the main function uh, 
idiom, let's just go ahead and say Icarus flaps and starts from zero, right? Now, if you're thinking about how this must evaluate, notice there's a recursion that's happening here. So how, why is this a recursive function? Well, notice the function's name is Icarus. And inside of this function, we're calling the function again. And so the second time around, the flaps parameter will be one more than the previous one before it. But if you think about this and your brain hurts a little bit, like why this seems like this might be an infinitely recursive process, well, you're absolutely right. And so let's try actually evaluating the simple little program. All right, so if we run python-m lessons.ls42 recursion, uh-oh, we're flapping, we're flapping, we're flapping, and then, oh no, a recursion error maximum recursion depth exceeded while calling a Python function or object. Number of flaps was 992. Let me try this one more time. See if I get the same result. Yeah, number of flaps, 992. So at some point, this function had recurred too many times and the computer said, hey, it looks like this is running away and this is probably an infinitely recursive process. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this program down uh, without continuing to evaluate it. And we're gonna have that recursion error. And very briefly, if you can imagine what's going on when this program evaluates uh, in terms of memory, we've got our globals frame, and I'm not gonna draw this out with uh, a great deal of precision. And then we call Icarus, so Icarus function, and that would have a, a parameter of zero. So we go into that function and we see that flaps was zero, and we call Icarus with flaps plus one. So we would have another frame for Icarus, and its uh, flaps would be one. And you kind of get the sense that, uh-oh, uh, each time this function gets evaluated, it's trying to call itself again and again and again, right? And each time it, it's being called again, we're incrementing that flaps parameter by one. But there's no reason for this program to end. And unlike with a loop, notice that our stack memory is continuing to have to add more and more frames until eventually we say, okay, we're using too much memory for our stack and it looks like the same function is calling itself over and over again. Let's go ahead and exit out of this program with an error that in Python is called a recursion error, but you might also see this called a, a stack overflow error because the number of frames on your call stack is so high that it, it looks like there's probably an error in a recursive function that you've written somewhere. So this is what can go wrong with recursion. And whenever we're thinking of a recursive process or structure, we need to be thinking about, well, how do we know when it's done? How do we know when to stop this process? All right, so let's quickly um, do something to make this a valid uh, uh, recursive process. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna add a condition. And we're gonna say if flaps is, let's say greater than five, we'll, we'll make this small. All we're gonna do is print uh, base case. Right? And we'll talk about that name in just a moment. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is uh, what we were doing before. All right, and okay. Now, let's try running this again. And hopefully what this means is, notice that uh, in this condition, when flaps is exceeding some threshold, we're gonna print the base case. And then what we're importantly not going to do is call this function from within itself again. We're not going to recur. All right, so we try this out. And wow, look at that, flaps 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we hit our base case, and the program's complete. Now that's pretty cool. Well, one of the things that is surprising and interesting about recursion that is demonstrated best in a simple little example like this by adding another print statement uh, after this, uh, and let's say coming down and flaps, is that we're building up this stack, right? We're, we're, our, our globals frame leads to this call on line 12 to the Icarus function, which leads to another call to the Icarus function, another call, another call, another call. We're adding up frames to our stack. And what we know is that when we return from a frame, we've got to go back to the last frame that hasn't yet returned and complete it out, and then go back to the last frame that hasn't returned and complete it out, and so on and so on. And so in this example, what we're going to see, if I try running it after adding those two lines, is something pretty fascinating. Notice we're flapping, we're calling the Icarus function as we uh, increase our parameter flaps. 
And so we see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we increase all the way until we hit that base case. And then this function starts returning. And where does a function return to? Well, it returns back to whatever line the function call originated on and to the frame of that context. And so notice that we return back to the frame where uh, the number of flaps was five, and then four, three, two, one, and finally zero. This process is inherently recursive, and it exhibits something that is fundamental to every recursive process that we're going to uh, see, as well as to every structure that's recursive and, and valid that, that we'll deal with in a computer science uh, application, which is that there's some terminating condition that we call the base case. All right, so let me just uh, label this. So this is our base case. And the base case is when uh, the termination, or is when our recursion terminates. All right, so the base case is when our recursion terminates. And uh, notice that the way that we can tell that is because there's no recursive call within this, this condition, right? So then our recursive case is going to be here, right? So this is our recursive case. And okay, that whenever flaps is uh, less than or equal to five, we're going to do what's in the else block here and carry out that logic and we can have recursion there. Now there's something else that's important about our recursion, uh, especially when we're talking about recursive functions or processes, is that notice something is happening here, specifically what's happening in this uh, argument for calling this function again. The third thing that we need to remember, so we've got our base case, we've got our recursive case, but in our recursive case, one of the things that we need to look out for that will help us avoid uh, infinite recursion is making progress toward our base case, right? So just like with a loop, where one of the ways that you avoid an infinite loop is you increase your counter variable towards your exit condition of that loop. Well, here uh, with recursion, we're gonna be changing our arguments typically. There are other ways that you'll see of, 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 of writing recursive processes, but for now, we're gonna think about how do we actually give a different argument to the subsequent recursive function call such that we're making progress towards the base case. So if we start from zero and we add one, notice that one is gonna be closer to our, our, our base case condition of uh, being greater than five than zero is. And subsequently, the next time we call it uh, with two, three and four and five, each time we move closer and closer to reaching that base case, which would terminate the recursive process, All right? So this is a very, very quick introduction to recursion. And why you should care about recursion is because once we add recursive structures to our repertoire, which is in the very next video, and the focus of the next course in computer science, data structures, you can start to build applications for other people that enable a level of creativity that uh, you can't even imagine as the person creating the software. Right? If you think of games like Minecraft and the crazy, incredible things people do in Minecraft, the inventor of Minecraft had no idea of what would come from that. The same is true of a program like Photoshop or even PowerPoint, where uh, the people who made PowerPoint have no idea of how you would actually wind up using it. What is recursion? It's the idea that we can define something in terms of itself. and combine and compose that idea in terms of itself. And there, are, uh, that's, that's defining recursion very broadly. Um, and there are specific uh, attributes of thinking in terms of a recursion as a process or an algorithm, as well as thinking uh, of, of structures and data structures as recursively defined data structures. These two concepts go hand in hand. And typically the most compelling algorithms that are recursive are, are being applied to data structures that are recursive. Uh, and so if you go and you learn anything about 3D software and how you make a 3D application come to life, recursion will help you out tremendously there. What can go wrong with recursion? Well, infinite recursion is something that we need to avoid. And the way that we avoid that is by being sure that we have a terminating condition or, or some reason to stop the recursive process. 
Now, when we talk about recursive structures in the next video, we'll look at something that uh, is going to be a new idea for how can we say that you might have a reference to some other structure of the same type, or you might have nothing at all. And when you have nothing at all, that's when we end. But I'm going to save that for the next video. And hopefully, after moving through this content, you've got a sense of um, why recursion is an important concept to begin to understand. Know that it does take some time to wrap your head around these concepts. And I would encourage you to diagram out the uh, code that you saw in the previous example to get a feel for how it works. And we'll be spending the next few lessons diving into recursion head on so that you can become more comfortable with the concept. Once you have a handle on how to think in terms of recursive structures and processes, so many creative, exciting applications that you can develop as a software engineer open up to you. And it's a fascinating intellectual journey to go on. Great work.